Salve, bentornati, good afternoon, welcome back. This is the site of the polaio, the chicken coop. If you've watched this series before, you'll know that this was where it all began about a year ago. Do you remember how I said to you that the reason we were doing it is because of this uh, incentive, this tax incentive, where you could, with building projects, um, with construction projects, you could get 70% back uh, from the government, but now they have decided to uh, change the laws uh, pertaining to that uh, incentives so it's it's quite well it's quite difficult in fact there were protests in Rome uh, this week there are all these people who have uh, started projects like us thinking okay we could afford to do this because uh, there was 70% discount on everything on the labor on the building materials and now uh, the government's changed their mind so uh, well they've changed how it how it processes. I'll get Guido to explain it later. But incentives from the state in which you can uh, sell the credit uh, of fifty percent of the works that you're doing to a financial institution like a bank or whatever. And since November, uh, because of the many companies in Italy have been doing illegal frauds and stuff, all the oh really is that why? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's been on the 12th of November this this uh, law called Decreto Antifraude and so since then to, to sell these credits you have to do a complicated procedure that wasn't ready until now. Now they've just completely blocked everything. There was actually yesterday a manifestation in... Uh, in they in, didn't in, understand that. A, a protest. A protest, yeah. sorry. A protest uh, in, in Rome. Uh, because obviously uh, many people got stuck with, uh, with with not being able to sell these credits, and so we're being without money. I read uh, it, and I read in the newspaper that they said a, a million jobs at risk. So they're, more, they're, more. They're, really? the, 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 the Italy in 2021 had an enormous GPD uh, increase of 6.5, mm -hmm. great part of which was coming from the constructions that right. were boosted by all these credits, this thing that you could do works, and practically in certain cases the state was giving you back everything and in the other at least 50%. And this was all uh, working because you could sell this credit towards the state and cash it. Mm. And this cashing mechanism has been blocked since November. So now everything is slowing down and actually we haven't got back yet any money from all the works that we've done. And that's so maybe 30 or 40,000 euros so yeah. obviously if you budget something and you think that you will have certain cash flows coming back from this uh, sale of credits you, and then does that changes obviously you have to slow down everything so that's yeah, yeah. one of the reasons uh yeah that put a little bit of a spanner in the works but as you know we have been uh, not just twiddling our thumbs i've been super busy uh, renovating the main house uh, where we have been trying to make a life, uh, trying to sort of gradually move uh, here from uh, the apartment where we are usually living in Florence. But honestly, in the last year, we've been more more here and it's been so beautiful. I just, I love the countryside. I love that the weather here is just it's incredible. I mean, my parents who are Australian and uh, they can't believe the winter we've had. I mean, we're all just sitting out, eating outside for lunch every day in t-shirts in nothing but cotton. It does get chilly in the, in the afternoons. And actually I went into a small town near here and it was quite a lot colder. I think for some reason, this hill where we are, it just gets a lot of sunshine and, uh, and it's really warm. So we're lucky in that regard, but <laughs> in terms of the update on the chicken coop, things have come to a standstill, but they're all going to start up again uh, this week. You really get the sense of, of, of space and, and scale and dimension, and, and it really, you can imagine what it's going to be like. I mean, even once they put the walls up, we've, we're going to have this incredible view out of the olive groves, and it's... Uh, 
yeah, I, I, I mean, we have <laughs> not much, but we have a foundation and we have a back wall. And uh, do you remember when we were having all the debate about the kitchen and where to put everything? So uh, we chose, thanks in large part to <laughs> many of your comments, uh, to put the, the kitchen uh, bench and sink along here so that you can look out uh, to this view. And the stufa, the stove here, um, the, the wood-fired stove uh, here. And then this is all going to be the, the French doors that open out onto the garden uh, where we'll have a big table for lunches overlooking the green. And here we'll have the bedroom uh, with the clawfoot bath looking out again over the view. <sighs> so there is a lot of landscaping that has to be done. Uh, they're going to have to clear away all of that stone and rubble. And uh, we're going to make the surrounding area quite pretty because I imagine anyone who's staying here will be eating outside pretty much all the time. And uh, then we have to, uh, well, we, they, the builders are going to reinforce this hill so that it's all uh, nice and stable. So you see here, uh, one of the holdups has been <laughs> trying to get these bricks, uh, which Guido wanted a very sp specific kind so that they could uh, imitate the, or replicate the, the bricks that were on the parapet on the granary behind here. So we've been waiting for months for these handmade bricks that are going to make the parapet that will go all around here. And uh, it will be quite beautiful because obviously this space <laughs> you can just use for, have a, have a big table up here for, for breakfast or for, Aperitivo, uh, you can see the sun go down on this side. And uh, yeah, it will be a great place to relax as an alternative to down in the garden. Uh, however, there's, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's not much you can do if you don't have the, uh, the materials. So I think supposedly uh, they are going to arrive this week and they will start uh, building uh, the parapet. We shall see. Do you think they're going to arrive? <laughs> Doesn't it just seem like yesterday that I was filming Guido uh, picking the artichokes here and now it's almost artichoke season again. We have to, the strimmer broke, so we have to cut all around here and uh, liberate them a bit. But anyway, let's go on to the, to the pig's eyes. Look at this, it's so beautiful. Um, this viewer, made this herself for me and I just I love it it's so so pretty and and uh, thank you also she sent me also a book divine decluttering which she wrote herself thank you very much it's beautiful so welcome to the next project which we shall be starting and not necessarily finishing anytime soon but that's the Italian <laughs> mentality that one has to adopt uh, here is just thinking that things will happen when they happen and you just have to keep plodding along and and uh, and without getting too fixated on on the finished date. I don't know if you recall the pigsties have this beautiful view out over the cipressi, the cypress pines uh, and yeah there are, there are a lot of them but they're completely in oh! entangled, scusa, I was reticent about leaning against the wall because I thought maybe there are snakes with all this sun. We've been having the warmest, sunniest winter I've ever encountered in Italy. I think when we had lunch today it was about 23 degrees. It certainly makes for a pleasant uh, time working in the garden and that's why uh, this past week uh, we decided to clear the pigsties. Uh, as I said last, at the end of last episode, I, I really do feel it's like I've got this vision of Prince Charming hacking his way through with a sword to get to Sleeping Beauty. We made a lot of headway and it was also really cathartic, I think, being with family and or your partner 
or even just alone, frankly, when I'm just outside gardening and clearing things and, and feeling the sun on your skin. And it's certainly been a beautiful week of hard but rewarding work. Ciao Guido! Ciao! <laughs> Non so che cosa sia, amore. So funny, both Guido and my father said, no, these bonfires are never going to light. Uh, the branches are too fresh, they're not dry enough. And uh, then my mother and I took on the challenge and got them both lit. 
Oh, mommy. No. I found the floor, the terracotta floor of the pisk sty, but digging it up is quite uh, a lot of work. Jungle here. <laughs> so that's if I go more than you want. Buongiorno, good morning. We're back at it today. You know what they say, a pigsty day keeps the doctor away. Although I have to say we were all quite sore after yesterday's work. By the way, someone said the pe uh, lots of... Uh, <laughs> Somebody said we need another cherry tree. No. See? We have two. Yeah, but they're the same variety and this ferrovia needs another variety to pollinate. I know, I know. I wish they told me that at the nursery when I asked. But... So although it doesn't look like winter, it is winter and that's why we're doing it all now because it's the best time when everything's dead. So much easier to clean. Uh, I don't know if you remember when I filmed these in, in summer and spring, they're just completely overgrown. It's a true jungle. Now you can see straight through here. Yeah, <laughs> it was literally a bush. Yeah. It took me half an hour to do all this. I hope I wasn't stupid and cutting now because it's still February and this plant is exposed to northeast so I hope we won't get too much cold wind otherwise I've damaged this plant. So and this is a tree that a very old tree as you can see. I don't know, maybe it's 200 years old, whatever. Really? Even more, look what a trunk. Yeah. And it died in certain parts, then it hasn't been pruned for 10 years, then it has been pruned in a certain way. And I'm trying to, I tried to give it back, give back the, try to give it like a vase form. Mm -mm. And to make these uh, branches try to uh, develop in order to have the umbrella effect mm. and eventually have all solids. But it's not easy. I'm not uh, such an expert. And it's not easy when, when you have a tree that hasn't been pruned properly for many years. Like that one, that's easier. You just 
clean it up in the middle mm -mm. And, 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 and take away what's in excess. This is like you have to reorientate all the main branches and so eventually. Up in, uh, in, in Florence, how many olive trees do your family have? Three and a half thousand. Three and a half thousand, and then they, they, you have the the people who work on the farm who who yeah, prune no, them. But yeah, but it's really really complicated because to prune a plant like this, minimum you can get the cheapest you can get outsourcing it is six or seven euro per plant, mm. and then you have to deal with all the what's it the the branches the branches. So let's say the the best you can do it six euro seven euro with someone that deals also with the plants so that's every thousand plants is seven thousand euro of pruning wow and you don't need to prune every year but at least every two you have to give to keep them in shape otherwise then you'll find yourself after five or six years six years that the plant is just go, gone the wrong way and then you will have to take much more time to prune it properly 200 years that means it was here when the Partigiani, the partisans, were hiding, and much, much before. Even before, this tree was already old when the partisans. Yeah. Probably that tree was there when Napoleone was <laughs> castled in Elba. Uh -huh. so, cross, otherwise, and it comes directly there from there. So, I have the root of the olive tree there, so I had to sort of skip that space and move down here. And it's a slow process, but the idea is that we would have a path that can lead to the pigsties. Sunday probably is fun because it's pruning day. Look what I cleared. Bravissimo. Non è facile. So, may not look like much, but uh, this is as far as we came. Uh, just working on about three, three of these. We feel like we made a lot of progress and we still have to decide really uh, what what they're going to become if you have have any ideas the limitations well <laughs> it's kind of ambiguous uh, as as always uh, initially uh, we would have to get permits if we did it the way we did uh, for the for the chicken coop for the bolayo and that seemed exaggerated because it's really you know doing all that anti-seismic foundation when when really we're not in a, in a high earthquake zone, uh, it's it's a lot of money, and we don't sort of have the the budget right now to, or even in the in the, in the near future, uh, to renovate these completely. We're wondering also uh, if you had to throw down all of the stone, that would I mean you're basically throwing down the beauty of it. So should we just clear them and make them into a little place with just to have a cup of tea or a glass of wine and put a little table and and and, and have it be somewhere to come for a different view? Or uh, another idea is to make a little walled vegetable gardens and each pigsty could be a different uh, different type of vegetable, a, a, a pomodoro pigsty and then we could have a uh, just, I don't know, even cut flowers or herbs, a little herb, walled herb garden would be quite cute. And you'd have this beautiful view, so you wouldn't mind coming down here to, to water things and we could perhaps create some kind of structure that, that could incorporate this stone, but oh, but how do you do it? How do you do it so that it's, that it's safe? We're able to bring water and electricity down here, so uh, yeah, please, please share with me your ideas and, and I will certainly read them as always. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you as always to the kind people who support me on patreon.com forward slash Kylie Flavel. Hi, <laughs> when I think about my patrons, I feel immense gratitude and, and just so, oh, I just think, oh gosh, why, how can I, how can I manage my time better so that I can be able to write back to you all because um, you deserve it. But um, 
I just I haven't worked that out yet. Uh, I don't. Uh, I think because there you know there are a lot of look couples who do YouTube and and uh, and renovations and things, but there's two of them sort of sharing the. Uh, the duties of coming up with ideas and, and filming and editing and orchestrating everything and I'm I'm doing it on my own which I love and which is uh, you know Guido has uh, he doesn't <laughs> he's not as awake for as many hours as me and he also has his his job unfortunately my parents are leaving day after tomorrow actually they're leaving on the day that this uh, this video will come out and uh, we are all going to be absolutely miserable. Guido keeps stopping me and saying, I'm so sad, I'm so sad. And uh, I think that's that's all anyone could ask for is it's really the it's really the most most wonderful thing, isn't it, when you can have your your the person you're in love with uh, get on with your family. It's not not <laughs> certainly something I don't take for granted. Uh, anyway, goodbye, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Alla prossima. <laughs>